Hello, everybody. This is Stacy from The Advisor. And today I'm very excited because we have an author and life coach. She is a podcast. Um, she's in our podcast series and she is also has her own podcast here. She is a beautiful person. And like I mentioned earlier, she is a life coach and she is an author. And today she wants to speak about overcoming trauma, how we should get, how we can getting help and is empowering. She wants to talk about how trauma led her to becoming a, a co-author and also talk about different ways to, to overcome in trauma and how you could get the right help, how you're able to change and so much more. So if you're experiencing trauma in your life, if you have problems that you really know deep down inside are holding you back from enjoying life and being the person that you're capable of being, listen to Blanca today because she has a great message and she has tools and strategies that can help you overcome the things in life that are holding you back and make you not feel to your potential. Because living life, we want to be happy, healthy, and productive. And if we can't be those things, it really is very depressing and, and upsetting. But today, Blanca is going to show you how you could actually do these things to overcome trauma and be that happy, healthy, productive person you've always wanted to be. So Blanca, thank you so much for being on the show. I'm so honored to have you in our podcast series. I'm so glad that you have a podcast. Plus you have your own podcast. So you do two podcasts. You have your podcast with us and you have another podcast that maybe you can mention later on in the show. And, you know, it's an honor to have you, you know, part of our, our team. We love having you as a part of our team. And tell everybody a little about yourself and what you do. And, and you're just a wonderful person. I love you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Stacey. Likewise, likewise. I'm so happy and honored to be here too. These are conversations that are so important to have because it we just don't know who we can help out there with our words and with our help. I am, I've been a licensed massage therapist for almost 19 years already. And in my experience as a massage therapist, it takes only one question for people to open up. Like, so how are you doing today? What an important question to ask anybody how are you doing today and people can say the simplest thing like fine or they can open up like a book just like thousands of patients that I have had in my career has done and to me that is a big deal it's very important because it's a beautiful thing to be heard there's a lot of people that they feel isolated neglected rejected that they don't have anything meaningful in this life because they are not being heard and in this human experience how important it is to have a voice how important it is communication how important it is to for our growth for right. our progress in is in this life and of course improving quality of life and yeah. besides that I am a holistic life coach. So of course I have clients that they want to open up. They want to talk about their dreams, their hopes, the things that people maybe around them don't believe that they're capable of doing, yeah. trying to find this zone, getting out of their comfort zone and facing the challenges head on so they can make it through the other side. And yeah. that and that has everything to do with dealing with trauma, yeah. overcoming trauma, getting out of that rabbit hole, so to speak, of confusion, of darkness, of these seasons that can be so long in our lives. And I'm speaking for myself as well. I was 47 years in silence. Since mm -hmm. I was an eight-year-old girl, when I lost my father tragically and suddenly to dealing and living around chronic untreated mental illnesses, that was the way I grew up my entire natural life. I grew up with either mental illnesses, very chronic, like my own mother. I didn't know any better, but something was off with my mother, especially when she entered her perimenopause and menopausal years that mm -hmm. the bodies are going through many, many changes. People that have mental illness have the 
big tendency of their mental illnesses being aggravated even more, getting worse. And if they don't have that help, things can turn out to be pretty, pretty dark. So I grew up around all of this confusion and it led me to be in a world of confusion myself, starting with the fact that I didn't know how to grieve my father's death because yeah. all we heard was, Shh, you don't talk about the dead. And that was the culture back then. But this was in the 70s. But I am sure that to this day, there's still families that everything is about hush, hush, quiet, quiet, throw it under the rug and throw it under the rug. And what happens with this situation is that it, start, it starts accumulating. All of this trauma starts accumulating one over the other, the other, the other. And it can lead us to low self-esteem, low self-worth, self-destructive patterns like I did when I was in my younger years that I entered my teens, my 20s. That's when... I wanted to numb the pain because I was still in grief with my father's passing. I was really angry at my father because he left me here with my mother. So all I said to myself is like, why did you leave me here with this crazy person? Because right. my father was my person. I was daddy's girl. And when mm -hmm. he passed all of a sudden, he got killed. I was like, why did you leave me with, with her? And my anger with my father upon his passing, it really lasted for a very long time. But here we go again. It was because I didn't know how to grieve. I didn't know how to go through the loss, how to be sad, happy, angry. But the, and my anger lasted way too long. And then upon my father's passing too, I was told that I was the little one. The little one, she is the youngest one. She doesn't know. The little kid doesn't know. Please don't be confused with that because the most important ages for us to, that we really absorb like a sponge, absolutely everything is yeah. from being a little kid all the way to 16 years old. That, mm -hmm. that boy, like right here, from here to here, those ages are vital and it's proven i was doing some research about this that two-thirds of all kids all over the planet will suffer a some kind of a trauma by the time they reach 16 years old whether it is the violent loss of someone being bullied by family members or at school and or sexual assault i mm. went through all of them all yeah. of them and how did I cope? I didn't cope. I didn't say anything to anybody. I kept it under the rug and under the rug. So my low self-esteem, low self-worth, and my self-destructive pattern just kept on growing and growing. And I, I really started drowning the rooting of my problem, which was untreated childhood trauma with drugs and alcohol and jumping from person to person to person. I was looking for something in the outside when mm. all I needed to do is find it in the inside. And right. once I understood the concept, which is a beautiful thing, it's like, okay, real love starts with me, not me. Yeah go into the outside to look for it. And once I started to understand the concept, understand that, okay, I'm capable of healing. Okay, I'm capable of having hope. I'm capable of putting myself together and go on with my life. Definitely major changes came and it was a beautiful thing. I'm very grateful for it. Oh my God, that's an amazing story. I, and I'm grateful that you were able to actually change. For many people, it's very hard to change. Many people go into denial. They don't want to accept that all these things have happened to them because if they accept it, if they get out of the denial, then they have to accept that they had this trauma. And that's very painful because once you accept it, you have to face it and, and facing it uh, you know, and then making changes is very scary. People are, you know, the, the two things that hold people back are fear and change. 
And, you know, once you get out of the denial stage, you know, which most people like to stay in denial, but they don't realize that the problems are not going to go away if you're in denial. You can make believe they're not there, but they're still there and they're still affecting you and your behaviors and your actions and your life. And then the point where we have to accept it and then we have to do something about it. That's very scary for people because if they accept it, again, we have to face change and people are fearful of change because they don't know what to expect. What's going to happen? You know, am I going to fail? Am I going to like the person I become? But I can totally relate to you because I went through a very traumatic time in my own life, you know, from childhood to 16 years old, you know, and that was a very rough stage in my life. And it definitely, definitely played a part of, of you know, a lot of the pain and things, trauma, the things I had to go through in life. Definitely, you know, it hurt my self-esteem. It hurt who I was as a person. It helped. It hurt my self-worth. It, it made me do things I didn't want to do because I, I hung out with the wrong people because I didn't feel worthy of myself. So again, we were you were talking about your own self. I get you. I get you 100%. Now, for people who are out there, what would you tell them, you know, some of the steps that they could take? Because a lot of people are fearful of, of you know, they, 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 they know that they're not where they want to be in life. They can feel it in their heart. But, you know, what are the next steps? How can people get out of that rut? Because, you know, the emotions, you know, I've noticed, you know, people go through the frustration, the anger, the sadness, the depression, you know, and and, and it just and, and then gets to a point where you have so many emotions and so many things going on and your thoughts become your erratic because you start thinking a lot and you start analyzing and, and, and sometimes even problems that don't even occur they become a problem in your head, you know, and then people get numb because they got so many emotions and they just don't even know, you know, how they're starting to feel anymore. They don't know what's going on. They're kind of losing track of who they are as a person. And so how do you start? Like step one, how do you start so you could get out of that negative lifestyle and start to get into a more healthier lifestyle where you could produce positive change? I believe that acceptance is the rooting of change, accepting where we have been, accepting our actions, whether they were the good, the bad, and the ugly, mm -hmm. accepting that everything happens for a reason. That's very important, very important, because the, the moment that I, in my experience, that I accepted everything happens for a reason even if we don't understand and have no comprehension why this is happening on this moment i think that a huge door can start opening to change to improvement oh. to healing understanding that healing is not a one day thing or oh i'm healed i can move on with my life i believe that healing can take a lifetime Mm -hmm. I am still in the process of healing. Mm -hmm. I Here I am in my menopausal stages. I'm 58 years old. According to many people in society, when you are in your 50s, late 50s, it's like, okay, you're done with life. You're supposed to have everything figured <laughs> out and know exactly what you are doing before the rest of your life. And that is, I think that's a lot of pressure and it's unnecessary pressure because we are beings of, change and change mm -hmm. how hard it is for us to accept change when change is the most secure thing that we have in life in this mm -hmm. human experience we don't go without change we are changing yeah. from the moment of conception to the moment of our passing i have heard many times i heard in my culture oh i am an old person i have done everything i know everything that's not true that is not true we're always learning something new in life because yeah. life is about learning life is about change and yeah. i have a, i have a teacher this wonderful young man yeah he's in his 30s and he's my teacher okay and i'm in my late 50s and this person that he's 33 years old, he's my teacher. I think yeah. that's a beautiful thing because we have the capacity to learn from a lot of people 
no matter what age they are, we can even learn from little kids how to yeah. smile a little bit more in this life. Uh -huh. This Going back to my teacher, he says that our mind is either in a state of growth or a state of decay. Mm -hmm. I refuse for my mind to be in a state of decay. And this is what happens. We get lost in one situation, believing that we will never get out of it because we were conditioned to be that way. We grew up in this environment and I don't know any better. Yeah. And that is, those are truth. Definitely. You grew up in, in this environment. You didn't know any better, but you're capable of knowing better. Yeah. The wounds, and I insist, the wounds are not our fault, but the healing is our responsibility. There are yeah. so many tools nowadays more than ever. There's so many tools that all we need to do is pick him up and use him. We yeah. can read a million books, but if we don't put into practice what we learn, then it's all good for nothing. Yeah. The application of change, that is when knowledge comes in. There's yeah. a saying, knowledge is power, but the application of the knowledge, that is power. In yes. my experience, I started my healing journey when I became a mother and I said, I am done with being in this vicious circle. The father of my kids, rest in peace, he was a drug addict. He had low self-esteem, low self-worth, self-destructive self -destructive patterns. We were a mirror of each other. Let's yes. put it that's this way. He, mm -hmm. We were mirroring each other. He was sexually abused when he was a little boy. I was sexually abused when I was a little girl too. Now, the way that he kept on dealing with his grief, that was another story. And I learned from him where my life was going. Isn't that amazing? And mm -hmm. to this day, I really honor his memory because thanks and, you know, he chose to do what he chose to do with his life. He was a drug addict to the day he died. But in my experience, working with many addicts, thousands of them, I keep on learning that the root cause of addiction is not the addiction, is trauma, is yes. abuse, is mm -hmm. so many things, is mental illnesses as yeah. well. And this ball of confusion of not knowing how to cope with so much, that's what leads a lot of people to wanting to numb it, numb it like I did for many mm -hmm. years. In the 80s, I was a cokehead. I did mm -hmm. cocaine. And that was the age when the Colombian cartels were transporting cocaine to Miami and Puerto Rico was a bridge to this. So it was it was horrific. And I was in my early 20s and I didn't know where my life was going. And all I was doing was numbing my mm -hmm. root cause, which was chronic childhood trauma untreated, living around mental illness and being sexually assaulted repeatedly. And that was my rooting right there. I didn't know how to cope because I was isolated and I didn't think, and of course, shame. I was ashamed. I thought it was all my fault. I was responsible for all of this. And no, that never happened. That was never the case. One day when I had my kids, having, having kids, being a parent is tough. It's a tough job. And many times it kind of suck. But when I became a parent, that's when I said to myself, okay, it's time to do something here because I don't want them to have a mother that just keeps on falling down that rabbit hole and we are hardly surviving. Like mm -hmm. I hardly did with my mother, with my relationship with my mother after my father's death, we were yeah. surviving. We live on good moments, but yeah. it was exactly that moments, not consistency, not having harmony, not finding that harmony because it was never there. I lived it enough. I said, okay, I am not going to go down that road because 
I am not going to be my past. Okay. Yes. My past is not going to define who I'm going to, who I am and who I plan to be. Let's pick right. up the tools, learn the lessons finally, and move on. A book that really helped me, and it was a miracle. I was sitting down at a doctor's office and I look at that book and I said, the secret. That was the secret. Wow, I have so many secrets. And yes, I had many secrets. I picked up that book. And from there on, I am telling you that it was a huge open door to better things for my life. I not only started write, uh, reading books about personal growth and self-help, but I went to counseling. I went to group counseling. I started not trying. I stopped trying to do everything on my own. Right. I stopped not talking, not speaking up, not raising my voice, not stepping into my power. I stopped all of that. And I said, okay, if I want to feel better and do better, I got to change. I got to change my ways. I got to improve who I am. And mm -hmm. all the way to this day, I'm still improving. I'm still open to change, whatever change God has, has in store with for me. I, yes. I'm definitely open to it. I'm grateful about it. And this mission that we both have, spreading yes. the word, helping others improve the quality of life. It's yes. a huge mission for us that we've been in very difficult situations in our life. And I insist that we can all improve quality of life no matter what age we are. And that's why we're here today. Yes, 100%. 100%. I agree with you. I feel like when I'm talking to you, I feel like you're a mirror and it's just everything you've gone through, I've gone through too. And, um, you know, it, it, it is very true. You know, everything you said, you know, just going through it and then looking for ways to cope with it. And then, you know, sometimes those ways aren't healthy ways, but you're looking to numb that pain. You're looking to numb, you know, that traumatic you know, events that came in your life and, and just shook your life upside down, you know, and mentally, emotionally, you know, physically, it just, it just turned your, your entire life around to the point where you, you, you had to feel, you know, you had to figure out a different way of living, you know, and I, I had that same independent life, you know, like personality. I wanted to be independent. I didn't want to ask people for things. You know, I voiced myself. I, you know, I made my voice loud and clear. My And I had to learn how to take a step back and to really be more, more, um, lay back and understand and, and, and learn how to really listen and not be the person that has to be heard and not get angry as soon as something upset me to learn how to deal with things in a better way. Now you, you know, stressed, you know, before we, we started the podcast that, that it, it's very, um, getting help is very empowering. Can you discuss why getting help is so empowering? Yes, Absolutely. And I, I know that a lot of people can relate to me when I say this. When, when we have low self-esteem and low self-worth, we believe that we are not worth people listening to us. We mm -hmm. believe that if we dare to ask someone for help, we are not worth their time and their effort and their energy to be invested on us. I know a lot of people can relate to this the first moment I asked for help I reached out and all I received was love compassion kindness and empathy a whole new world of a new meaning of love came into my life I'm, I'm, I'm I get even emotional about this because I didn't experience this in my own home. Yeah. And it was like, wow, this is so different. This is so good. I stopped looking around me to families that they were stable. They have the mom, the dad in a loving environment, then being in tune with each other, the bond growing as, as they kept on aging. And it's like, wow. And I, I will always be admiring these families from the outside because I was an outsider saying to myself, wow, I wish I had that. Wow, I wish I had that. God chose this path for me for a reason. 
And in my experience, blood family doesn't have to be your family. There is right. so many other souls that come to your life. There's a lot of people that come and go in our lives. That is for sure. Most of them, they come and go for a reason, a season, or a lifetime. Yeah. And I have, of course, we have a group of few people that these people are here to stay for a lifetime. And yeah. those are your family. And yeah. that's when this, there's this beautiful saying. It's like, oh, my brother from another father, my, my sister from another mister. And I love that because it's true. And it's yeah. as fulfilling as, have, as being blood family. When, yeah. when I opened up finally through the form of a co-authorship about my childhood trauma, being sexually assaulted, abused, for so many years by different people sexually harassed for many many years by so many faces and when my brother and my sister read my chapter they were like i didn't know anything it's like of course you didn't of course nobody didn't it was 47 years of silence yeah. and being functional because I my 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 method of coping and surviving was I was being functional and as long as I was functional everything was good and I had all my crap together and no no you know I was I, I was surviving I was like keeping my head above water as much as I could until yeah it was time to change. And the biggest, I think, I think the one thing that I embrace the most about these changes is reaching out, asking for help and not doing it alone. And that's one of the major reasons why I became a holistic life coach, because I have a life coach already for three years. I've been with a life coach and I love my life coach. We have a fantastic relationship but life coaching is not that they're going to, they're here to solve and fix your life. You right. got to do your part. You got to do the work if you want these changes to happen. So please yeah. be open that yes, no matter what happens in your life, no matter what age you are, especially the aging part that yeah. so many people has this limiting belief that just because you're in your thirties, forties, or fifties, or even sixties or seventies, Oh, yeah. I cannot change. It's too late for me. No, it's never late when good changes are coming your way. It's never, never late. Reach yeah. out, get help. You will always find someone that will give you exactly what you've been yearning for, which is the help, the love, the empathy, and somebody just being there for you. I promise you that. Exactly. A hundred percent, a hundred percent, you know, for people who want to change and they just don't know how now your, your first, your first um, suggestion is to reach out, get that change. And it is, it's, it's, it's amazing because a lot of times, you know, you feel shameful to ask for help because you feel like you should be the one doing it yourself. But once you ask for help, it's amazing how many people will come out of the woodwork and show you that love, show you that care, are more than happy to help you. And for me, it was just amazing how how people, you know, wanted to and, and they express their love through their actions. But for, you know, for lots of people, how are other, you know, steps that they people could, you know, change, you know, that they can, you know, things to get them on their way on the right pathway. Do you have any suggestions for those people when it comes to change? Oh, yes, absolutely. Self-care is the best care. And the best investment that we can do is the one on ourselves. Don't be shy on investing on yourself either with something as simple as going to a meditation class. Wow, how powerful is meditation? Going to a place where do, they do breathing exercises. The fastest and most efficient way to de-stress ourselves is through breathing exercises. The yeah. slower, the longer the inhale and the exhale three times, I promise you this scientifically proven, Yes. you will start to get into a calmer state. Yes. Look for, get into groups with similar interests. Mm -hmm. Not the group that is all about the gossip 
and the drama and reality shows that are not conducive to anything good in our lives. Let's, let's, put, this, right. let's put it this way. You know, uh, unfortunately, um, social media and all these services, they glorify drama and negativity way too much. That is yeah. not healthy for none of us. I don't watch the news. I don't watch reality. I mean, I don't have time or the energy to yeah. be doing these things because I consider that my time is way too valuable yeah. to be wasting it on something that only brings more stress into my life. Exactly. I, I highly recommend that if you are a person that likes to go outside, you have a dog, an animal, or on your own, go outside it's the simplest things in life that can be so important and so vital for our growth and our progress you yeah. go outside for a 20 minute walk it brings clarity of mind it helps you with new ideas it brings mm -hmm. full oxygenation to your body because of fresh air and yes. And besides your muscles of moving, you, your body is in movement and a body that is in movement will always feel better. I promise you that no matter what age we are and mm -hmm. do yourself a favor, take care of yourself, put it into prayer. How about exercising some gratitude for the simplest things we have in life, like a fridge, like mm -hmm. a roof over our head like a yeah. car where we go places. How about right. being grateful for Uber services that is mm -hmm. so reliable? The other yeah. day I, I went to Miami and I didn't want to drive. So what did I do? I took a train and I took an Uber. It was fantastic. I was like, oh my God, thank you so much for this. <laughs> How about enjoying some alone time? How empowering it is for us to enjoy our own company try it out you may yeah. be surprised of how much of a good time you will have with your own company how important that is and it's such simple things that in many occasions it didn't even cost you money because if you go for a, a 20 30 minute walk you're not only exercise your physical but you're exercising your mind besides yeah. the beautiful oxygenation to your body which is so important yeah water intake how important is water intake? Half our weight in ounces. That's the proper water intake on a daily basis. And yeah. why is water intake so important? Because if you have lack of water in your body, your muscles will get tight. You may mm -hmm. get a headache. Let's remember that 75% of our brain composition is water. 75% yeah. of our body composition, our muscle composition is based on water. Even for yeah. an intestinal system, water is vital. So we can have better movement because if we don't have good movement in our, in our intestine, our body will get toxic and hormonal systems get affected and our mindset gets affected as well. So when we say body, mind, and spirit, all of those three come to good. They always go together. They're not separate entities. They're mm -hmm. together in unison to function for a reason. So these very simple things I highly recommend it, not because I have read about it, I have done research about it, I recommend it to my clients, but I practice it on a daily basis. And this helps us tremendously to have harmony in this life. That's a fact. Oh, 100%, 100%. And you talk about also, you know, trauma and how that led you to be a co-author. Tell me a little bit more about that, how, how your past actually brought you to this point in your life where you were able to actually be a co-author and share your experiences. And, and tell us a little about what you co-authored and, and, and how it's helping people. And, 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 and I want to learn more about this. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I was, I mean, and this is when being in different circles and different groups is so helpful for I mean, these are the blessings in disguise that yeah. can lead us to amazing things in life. I I never knew that I would be co-author for anything, but 
in some moments in my life, I would say, oh my God, I've been through so much crap that I could write a book about it. But anyway, <laughs> many years later, I receive an email from a publishing company called Success Publishing Company. And the owner of this company is like, well, he's legit. He's a very powerful individual in the network marketing world. His name is Matt Morris. And I received this email that said, it was talking to me. Do you think you have a powerful story to tell? And I was like, well, yeah. If you think you have this, this book, a 15 minute call, you may be our next co-author. I was like, well, I don't have anything to lose. What, what can I, they say, no. Okay, let's okay. do it. So I booked the call. It was supposed to be 15 to 20 minutes, 45 minutes later, I was crying. The interviewer was crying and I got chosen for this co-authorship. And this chapter, I had to resume all of my life, my life experiences in 2000 words. It took me a while to get it all together. But yeah. this, when I started writing this co-authorship and putting it into, you know, the order in mm -hmm. which the events happened and everything that happened, I went into, I mean, I didn't know how much of a blessing in disguise this co-authorship was until I started writing it because it really helped me heal. And while I was writing, I would sob, I will get up, I will walk away, but I had a duty to fulfill. I had to get this done. I was on a time frame and this yeah. co-authorship is me and 29 other co-authors from all walks of life from all over the world. And all of us, we are telling our stories of going down that rabbit hole, going to trauma and basically being hopeful, being resilient, not giving up. And understanding that, yes, we can go on, we can do better things in life by communicating and telling our stories to as many people as possible. Because right. if we bring hope to one person, I know for certain that our work is done. And I am in Amazon Kindle and paperback, and I don't make a penny out of this. This is the most interesting thing. I, I don't sell it for profit. I All the proceeds of the selling of this book, it goes to Mission Blue. And this is one of Sylvia Earle's uh, foundations for the protection of the oceans. I'm a true believer that our oceans need to be cleaned the heck up and protected yeah. a little more because for many generations, we had no respect and no regards for the oceans. And all we've been doing is using our oceans as a garbage pit. So yeah. this is why I said, okay, this is an important chapter with all of these co-authors. And I want to do something as important to help out. And that's why this is all for charity. I don't make a penny is a great investment. I'm very grateful. If you have a compelling story to tell, just find a good publisher because it will help you tremendously with your growth and with your healing journey. And this book right here has led me to where I am today sitting here with you. And I didn't know where this would lead me. I was like, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to write it. I am going to help myself. I'm going to help others with this, but it has yeah. led me to so many other things in life that I didn't have a clue that will take me there. So I'm very grateful for it. And it's a beautiful thing, definitely. Oh my gosh, it is. It really is. I'm so, I'm so glad for you. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. It's a wonderful accomplishment. You know, people don't realize storytelling is so powerful oh, that yeah. people read your story. They could just have like one little aspect of that story that they could relate to. And you, you know, you could actually turn someone's life around, you know, and, and it's amazing that I don't, you know, people, you know, I always say, if you have a story and everybody has a story, share it because it's, it, storytelling is so powerful and it, and it can help people because so many people out there feel alone. So many people don't know what to do. And if they see another person has 
overcome something and then they they look and see what that person has done to overcome it you could actually you know help that person change their entire life you know and and storytelling is such an important important thing that everybody should you know should you know be willing to just deep down themselves if you know if they have a story to tell and everybody does use it for for the good of society to Absolutely. change lives and you know you've done that so congratulations thank you I'm very proud of you very proud of you thank and you. and if you had to take everything we talked about today and you want to emphasize on some important factors what would you like to emphasize today to the listeners to try to a message you'd like to get across i want to emphasize and insist and in, insist tremendously to all of the listeners out there don't let your past define your present don't let your past define your future because the past can be the biggest lessons and the biggest tools that you can pick up to do something better, not only for yourself, but for those around you. And you just and you just said it, how storytelling is so important for life. I was watching this powerful program in the National Geographic channel not long ago. And this powerful woman, she was saying, how do the, the only way to change this world is through stories. And it's very important that for people to know that. And yeah. you don't know, maybe your story is a very, because everybody has a story to tell. And yes. you don't know how powerful your story can be, how much of a life changer your story can be for others that need to hear this, need to embrace these moments. And that's why we're here. And how much, just like you said, how much it can help others change yeah. their mindset and improve their quality of life as well. Definitely, definitely. Oh, 100%. Now tell everybody about the services that you have and things that you do to help people. Yes, uh, I'm the owner of Wounded Healer LLC. And under this umbrella, I offer massage therapy services. I've been a, a licensed massage therapist for the state of Florida for almost 19 years. I absolutely love what I do. To last this long is because I absolutely mm -hmm. love it. I am a certified canine massage therapist as well. Yes, our doggies deserve massage too. And canine mm -hmm. massage has been around for since very ancient times and this is what happens with canine massage us and our dogs we are mammals we have muscle groups body systems organs emotions and if you have ever received a massage as a human that's the same effects that your dog will have with massage so it's a very interesting ancient practice here in the u.s is pretty new but around the world it has been around it's been here since 2700 bc i i understand so it's been here for a very long time i'm a holistic life coach as well i'm a speaker i'm a area director for toastmasters international i'm an educator i'm a group fitness instructor for individuals 45 plus and of course i volunteer i love volunteering if you want to feel empowered, find something that you can volunteer on. It will. It is one of the most amazing feelings that you can have and it's giving without expecting to receive anything. So volunteering is a very, very powerful thing that I love to do. I volunteer for animal platforms uh, for survivors of sexual assault as well. And of course, you know, volunteering is something that really fills you up. I volunteer for for Ocean that it as a platform that they we go and we clean beaches and we go pick up trash and clean up. So that's another platform that I'm a very big fan of and definitely spreading the word, spreading the joy, spreading the love, spreading hope and keep on going no matter what just keep on going you got this don't worry don't do it alone i insist i love it i love it now where can people find your website yes absolutely my website is www.woundedhealer.us and you can find 
all information from everything I do, podcasts that I have done. So I am there. I'm here for you. And if you need any help, just please let me know. Let's make it happen. I love it. And now is the book that you co-authored, is that out right now or is it in publication process? Yes. Yes. It's out right now. You can find it on my website as well, or I'm in an amazon.com. The name of the book is impact leadership with Blanca E. Rodriguez and I am in Kindle and paperback. And remember it's all for mission blue for the protection of the oceans, all the proceeds. I love it. Oh my God. This has been amazing. I love thank speaking. You. With you. You're like a ball of hope for people. Oh, and thank you. I, you are, you really are. And I just love, you know, I love it because your story is so relatable. Like you know, so many people have gone through similar situations. We've all gone through trauma in our lives. Everybody's gone through some sort of trauma and, you know, your, your advice and, and, you know, that people feel that they're not alone, that there are other people out there that go through these things and they can see that you survived and that others can survive. And, you know, it's, it's just, it's, it's nice because in life, we just need faith, courage, wisdom, strength, and hope. And if we have all those things, we can get through anything. And, you know, no matter what we go through life, as long as we learn how to heal, and we learn how to move forward in life, we could achieve anything. And, you know, and, and just getting out of that mentality that, you know, people think, you know, this is, this is all I deserve. This is all I'm worth. This is, you know, I don't, you know, I can't get any better. You know, that's not true, you know, and that's the message. One of the messages that you got across today that we all are worth something that we all can, you know, move on and become better people. We just have to make change, you know, like you said, you know, and empower and change and reaching out for change and asking for help. These are things that people have to do. And even though it might be scary to ask for help, it's so important to ask for help because we can't, can't do everything on our own. And, you know, and people have been through things and they know how to get help, help, help. They know how to get others to get through those th things in life. And, you know, so we, it's important that we reach out and not be ashamed, not be, you know, scared because there are so many good people out out there sometimes you listen to the news like you said you I don't like to listen to the news either you know and all you hear is these horrible things but there are so many good people out there that are willing to help that are that want to unite and and want to you know and help others become better and and elevate to new levels in their life and that's what we have to remember that there are a lot of good people out there and that's who have we have to connect with is those good people who are moving forward in life and I want to bring you on the same roller coaster ride with them Absolutely. So today has been an amazing day. Thank you so much, Blanca, for being on the show. Like Thank always, I, I love having you on. Thank and you. I love, I'm so glad you're doing your podcast with us. And everybody listen to Blanca's podcast. She has she her 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 episodes are amazing. So take the time out, listen and enjoy and learn and grow. So thank you so much. And you have a great day. Thank you. You as well. It was an honor to be here. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome.